And if you have a use case to build your custom monitoring tool or a custom monitoring dashboard for your application, then this video is for you. We'll be using CloudWatch, how we can publish our custom metric to the CloudWatch, how can we build our custom alarm and how can we build our custom dashboard. That's what we're going to see as part of the entire video. Before we start, if you're first time hearing the word CloudWatch, CloudWatch is the service which is offered by AWS where to log, for example, you have a Lambda which is performing certain operation and you want to monitor the Lambda if the calls are getting passed or failed or you have the EC2 instance where the CPU spike goes up and down, you want to monitor the utilization. So by default, AWS offers you certain monitoring and where those gets logs are stored is where the service called CloudWatch logs and each logs will have multiple subcomponents. we'll deep dive into it. And there are certain cases which are not natively offered by AWS. For example, in application specific logs or your custom use case logs, in that case, AWS still offers us to publish our own data to the CloudWatch and then we can get it visualized. That's what we're going to see it in today's video. So to talk about the log itself, logs, you have how they are grouping together is something called log groups. And this log groups is considered as a kind of a folder, you can say, or categorize. So if you're creating a Lambda, you're going to create a EC2 per resource, they're going to create a custom log group and each log group is going to consist of a stream in it. And this stream is going to consist of a series of information, like at what point of time, what was the value? For example, log group for EC2 can consist of a streaming of data, which is like at 12 o'clock, this is the metric value at one o'clock is a metric value, like wise, you can have the stream of data and each stream would consist of metrics. So metrics is going to consist of what are the parameters going to measure and each stream can hold up to like multiple metrics and each metric should consist of dimensions. So that we can use the dimensions to query that uh, each metric and it supports up to like 30 dimension values per metric it's going to do it. So if you see the same thing in the console, whatever we talked about. So if you go for CloudWatch as a service, the log groups would be here. If you see whichever the AWS created, it starts with the prefix AWS followed by the service or resource type Lambda EC2 S3 followed by the name of the resource itself. So that's how the log groups will be there and each log groups will have a sub thing called stream. So stream is like a group of events are published as part of the stream. And if you see this stream is published on 2021, first month, 16th. And if you go inside the stream, it's going to consist of multiple events and that events will consist of multiple metrics. Now, if you go into the metrics, that's a separate section for metrics where you can use metrics to query stuff. So metrics is going to consist of a namespace. So again, namespace is like grouping of, you can consider it as like one top level table. And from that namespace, for example, whatever the AWS is offering, it's going to be a namespace with the service name itself, S3, EC2, and likewise. If you're publishing your own namespace, then you can search it with your namespace which you're using. So in our case, like we created a specific namespace called eVidai. And if you see, I created like multiple metrics over there, like website A status, website B status and stuff around there. And we are logging the custom data over there. So why we are going to do this? We can use this metric data to visualize it. I will show that as well. So before that, there are two APIs involved here. So one API, if you want to, let's say, I want to push multiple, you know, events to the log groups, then you would use put log group API. But in our case, we, we just want to simplify it. We'll just pass our custom metrics to the CloudWatch and then get it visualized instead of pushing it to the log groups. So if you're using EC2 instance, if you want to publish your custom uh, application specific data, then you would generally go with the CloudWatch agent, which would be doing this task. But what we are going to do today is, let's assume that we are going to write a custom Lambda, which is going to monitor uh, website A, website B, website C, and we want to record the uh, status code of the website. So if any healthy domain, for example, if you go for uh, the network tab, and if I hit, let's say, google.com if the website is up then i would get a status code of 200 if the website is redirecting i will get a status code of 302 likewise so we can use this one to fetch the data to see whether the website is up or down based on the status code and then we are going to log it so how can we do that let me what we are going to do is we are going to use the aws cli to pass the metric value for this the 
One which we are going to use here is called the CloudWatch put metadata. If you are new to how the AWS CLA you want to go through documentation, we already made a video on that. I would advise to watch that. But then these are the generic parameters they're expecting. The namespace, it's something if if the namespace is passing the value, if it exists, it's going to do that. If it doesn't exist, it just creates a new namespace for you and then it's going to create it. And then the metric name, so metric name is going to, you know, further down you can query it and then each one going to consist of multiple dimensions. So with the help of dimensions, you know, as many dimensions you have, you can filter it out and get it visualized. So let's try it out. So what I'm going to do is let's create a new namespace called EBDI monitoring. And instead of the website status, let's say we'll keep it as google.com and then the status is going to be 200. Let's also create a couple of API calls stating google.com to be 500 and then let's say let's do this for youtube.com 200 and youtube.com 500 so ideally in real world what you do is uh, you would write a script which will be like calling the website fetch the status code and then store the status code value over here so that if you want to monitor the health status of the web application like every five minutes then that script will be running for every five minutes uh, hit the website fetch the status code value uh, store it as part of it and then you would be calling the custom cli and publish it in your you know website so let's make a couple of call over here so it's more of a replication that monitoring script hitting the website fetching the status code storing uh, the value and passing it to the metric. We're just skipping those automation steps, but just using the API to pass the value to the uh, CloudWatch. Comment below if you need a detailed video, like how we can write a script to query the health check, fetch the status code, and store it. I can make a video out of it. So we made one for like a couple of hits for 200. Let's make a couple of hits for 500 as well. Done, I made a couple of videos for 500. Now let's make a couple of videos of like hits for, let's make a couple of hits for the YouTube one, 500 part. All right, so let's do it. That is a delay of like five minutes of delay would be there once you make the hit to get it reflected. So if you go to the CloudWatch now and you should be ideally seeing a new metric, which is in our case, it's going to be EVDA monitoring. And you see like we use the two dimensions name, one for google.com and for youtube.com. So if you see in some time, you would be getting the hits which are made now over here. And you can also add it to the filter part. Let's say I want to see like overall 200 hits in the dashboard, then I can add it to the query. And I also show you one more thing. You can also build a custom dashboard out of it. So if you go for a dashboard, the same CloudWatch section, you can go create dashboard, let's say, monitoring and then you go for line based now here you can query like the same way you can select the one let's say i want to go for google.com and i want to query the 200 in this one let's say i will keep like create widget so this is for you can name it properly so this is going to be for google 200 and come on apply Let's create one more widget, which is for Google 500. If instead score of 500, then let's go here, add it, create widget. And so this is going to be for Google underscore 500. So same way you can do it for YouTube 500 as well. Same way, your namespace, your custom dimension, which you are trying to do, add it, create a widget and Let's do it. So YouTube underscore find. Let's save this. So now if you see, we started seeing the hits over here, like for the 500 part where we see the value over here. And the good thing of dashboard is like, even if you change it, right? So even if I change it from a different region, like from North Virginia to Ohio, even though our metrics we are passing it to is for North Virginia, you can still visualize the data 
by swapping the region. So if you see like we started seeing hits which are we made for 200, 500, 500 and now uh, it's not stops here right. So you can even create an alarm state. So you can go create alarm and now you can go for select metric in the region of North Virginia. Again it asks for our custom metric name let's say one to in google.com if the you know if the 500 goes above right so if you see okay we are in a different region that's a problem let's go for north virginia select metric monitoring google and let's create this select metric now we can say like okay if it is crossing above 100 then get me notified we're using a ec2 instance and you think that if the 500 is going down just restarting your server will fix it if that is a condition then even you can give the automatic resolution as well so let's go for here next so you can see like either you can scale up or you can even provide your ec2 action to restart so more number of automations can be done so that you can avoid the manual intervention in in such cases so this is, would be the straightforward one like how you can use aws cli in your monitoring process and publish it to a custom metric and then you can build your custom dashboard out of it and even uh, creating a custom alarm out of it so again you see like you can create an alarm name let's say demo and you can provide like custom actions as well so you can map it to an sns again as we see in the past like sns can trigger a lambda and that lambda can do some magic so it's up to us even you can directly integrate your lambda rather than triggering sns in case if you want to get notified plus also trigger a lambda you can go with sns and that sns will be like uh, who are subscribed is going to get notified so the lambda can be subscribed plus your alerting team can be get notified so two in one action can be performed by using sns in case if you don't want to then you can go with lambda action based on the use case we can come up with an architecture solution so as simple as that using aws cli we just saw how to publish a custom metric build a dashboard out of it and build an action if the soul gets crossed hope you find this video useful do comment if you want a detailed description of writing a Python code to monitor the website and status code out of it. Also do let us know if you have any other thought process on any project around that. Do consider subscribing our channel. See you later in the next video. Until then, tada from Vasan. Thanks.